welcome to another session on mobile communication. In this today's session, we are going to see uh, mobile communication networks unit number three, part two of antennas for mobile terminals. So I'll give you a recap of what we had seen in the last class. Then we'll uh, go for today's session. So in the last class, we had seen the capacity of our fading channels, specifically these low fading channels, its characteristics, how it's being designed, what are its futures. Then we had seen uh, the receive diversity, which is obtained at the receiver section, the parameters and its considerations, followed by the transmitter diversity, the transmit equations with uh, respect to Y of M. Then we had seen uh, two schemes for that. One is the allomotive scheme and the suboptimal schemes, which uses repetitive coding methodology. So, followed by this, we had seen the time diversity and frequency diversity equations. So, then we had uh, seen in a specific fast fading channel characteristics. This is what we had we had see we had seen in the last session. So in today's session, we are going to see the transmitter side information and the water filling mechanism of the frequency certifying channels. So let us see the transmitter side information first. Let's see the equations with respect to high signal to noise ratio region and the low signal to noise low signal noise ratio region. Let's in this that's of the time and frequency diversity in the fast fading channel. Fast fading channel. Then we have seen the water filling mechanisms. What happens at a lower signal to noise ratio? What happens at high signal noise ratio? And the capacity with full channel state information. Then we had seen with respect to channel state information of the transmitter with the additive white wash noise channel. And next, we had seen the water filling performance also. I think so. So since we have completed the water filling mechanism also in the last session, so we'll move on to the next topic, which is antennas for mobile terminals. So in part number three. So in part number three, we'll be seeing the trends in mobile terminal industry, the structure of a mobile, the resonance phenomena, and a specific antenna called monopole antenna, dipole antenna, and the different types of antennas, its terms. And the effects of this terms on the mobile terminal radiation and its properties with the coupling elements. So this is what we are going to see in unit number three, part number three. So it deals with the antennas. So since so many of you are unaware of what is an antenna is, so this terminology on antenna will give you a clear explanation of 
what antenna is so what is the purpose of an antenna that we are using so the answer is uh, the antenna is used for transmitting and receiving radio waves that are specially designed to transform guided waves into free space waves or vice versa so the transformation is done efficiently as much as possible so antenna is a radiating device which transmits and receives electromagnetic waves or your radio waves so the next question is how does the mobile terminal antenna affects the performance of a communication system so the mobile terminal antenna which is used for uh, mobile communication uses the fress equation For a received power in a any electromagnetic wave systems, so which we call as radio system. So the received power P R will be equal to G T G R lambda divided by four pi R the whole square into P T. So P T is the transmitted power, P R is the received power, G T is the gain of the antenna at transmitter, G R is the gain of the antenna at the receiver, lambda is the wavelength being used, R is the distance from The transmitter and the receiver. The antennas are typically misunderstood and used wrongly, especially the gains of the mobile terminal antenna. So let us see what does the antenna gain actually mean. Why is the mobile terminal antenna design so difficult to design? Is that The problem is the interrelationship inter between the size, efficiency, and bandwidth of an electrically small antenna. One of these can be improved uh, only at the expense of the others. One is that if you have a small antenna, you have a poor performance. It is not possible because of the physics laws that is used to construct a small antenna would cover the frequencies of the communication system. And would in addition radiate efficiently. It is not possible with the smaller antennas. So let us see some of the trends in the mobile terminal industries. So trend in the mobile terminal industry is to make the terminals more complex and smaller in size, especially thinner. So the challenges for an antenna designer. Is that multi-system mobile terminals that was used in uh, AM, FM, digital video broadcasting, digital video broadcasting high definition, GSM 850 standards, GSM 900 standards, GSM 1800 standards, GSM 1800 standard, UMTS, Universal Mobile Telecommunication System, wireless local area networking, Bluetooth. Global positioning system, general packet radio service, and so on. So these are the places where the antennas are being used. Specifically, the mobile terminal antennas. So the number of antennas and their volume is increasing nowadays. New models like cameras are integrated inside the mobile terminal. The available space for the antenna is is decreasing. mobile terminals are getting shorter and thinner the available space for antennas is decreasing even more so the bandwidth decreases and larger antenna would be required if larger antenna is there we cannot uh, uh, take it in all the places so the clamshell phones are getting more and more popular if you use uh, handheld phones the antenna designers are having a much challenge In designing the input impedance of the antennas, then uh, the competition in the market puts the pressure on the companies on the design of the antenna. The antennas should have a simple structure. They should be cheap and suitable for uh, mass production. Is that many product much more production? 
So during the last uh, three to five years, the traditional mobile terminal antennas like uh, PAFAs or monopoles haven't been uh, developing remark remarkably. So new traditional solutions are definitely needed, which could uh, evolve the antenna for better reception and with better tunability for so tuning of the frequency. So the structure of a mobile terminal is that the modules of a mobile terminal that mainly affect the radiation properties of the device are the printed circuit boards, PCB, which is uh, the PCB is uh, typically well grounded at least from its other side. The electromagnetic compatibility shell, which are metallic plates. located in critical places on top of the printed circuit boards. So then we have the antenna module. So these are typically a PAFA, which is planar inverted field array antenna or a monopole antenna located above the battery. So there are uh, screen which is present in the uh, mobile phone. It has metallic frames. Radio frequency connection circuit, which is connected to the ground plane. It is unknown for an outsider. Then, Battery is present, so which consists of lots of metal. The radio frequency connection to the ground plane it is unknown. Then we have the PRPs. So the uh, radio frequency connection to the ground plane is unknown. Is the camera and other modules like GPS, GPRS, Bluetooth are all connected to the ground plane. Due to the unknown connections inside the mobile terminals, antenna designers typically model the mobile terminals as an uh, antenna module connected to the so called chassis. So, the length and width of the chassis are chosen from the PCB, PCB design size. The optimal size that uh, being used is uh, 100 millimeter cross 40 millimeter. So, a good value of the thickness of the chassis is about 3 millimeter which is the thickness of the PCB plus the thickness of the ultramagnetic compatibility shielding. Which we call it as EMC shielding. Next is the resonance phenomenon. In order to work this antenna efficiently, it has to be tuned to a resonance. So the electrical length of the antenna has to be lambda or lambda by 2 or lambda by 4. Full wavelength, half wavelength, quarter wavelength. So most probably we will be using a quarter or half wavelength depending upon the application required. So examples is that uh, 900 megahertz is being operated at uh, lambda is equal to 33 centimeter and at 1800 megahertz the lambda value is 16 centimeter. So here are two examples one is the dipole antenna and then monopole antenna. So left side what you are seeing is a dipole. So where we have two poles. Two poles connected, lambda by four, lambda by four, lambda by four, lambda by four. This is pole one, this is pole two. So here you can see in the right hand side you have only single pole, which is lambda by four. 
so in x direction electromagnetic electric field in y direction magnetic field and in z direction electromagnetic field to propagate so next is some of the examples of monopole antennas you can see in the diagram the earlier mobile phones that were used so where the whip antennas so you can see this is the diagram uh, of a mobile phone which consists of a whip antenna so this whip antenna is cheap simple having good performance but this was used for long model handsets so next is the center is a helical antenna which is twisted monopole so this type of antennas were used in mobile phones so these are is having a reasonable performance compact and stronger it was used in your nokias or in reliance phones during a 2000 year 2001 to 3 4 5 In 2006 or 2007, even in Reliance phones, this was present. Helix antennas. Then next is the modified monopole antenna. So this uh, mo modified monopole antenna, the type of uh, modification in monopole where the monopole antenna, which is present here in the diagram, will have. matching circuits in the antenna itself so matching circuits are that uh, single strip matching double strip matching that you are studied in uh, electromagnetic fields those type of matching transformers will be present inside the antenna itself so here we have the folded monopole antenna having a height h and length l so here is a ground plane so all will be placed on different layers or different spaces with spacings so but in an uh, inverted field array antenna all these are being placed in a single layer okay which is your inverted field array antenna so then this i f s are being placed inside a planar so which is called as a PIFA, they are inverted field array. So the IFS and the PIFS are the most popular internal mobile terminal antennas used nowadays. So these are durable, long-lasting, cheaper, and easier to manufacture. So the resonance factor that leads to the resonance frequency can be obtained as f of L divided by ten to zero. Is equal to C divided by four of L one plus L two plus H. So L one is this, L two is this. Dimension, length and breadth, and H is the height of that planar. So less than or equal to the F G. So F R. Let's not forget about F R. Less than or equal to F R of H. W is equal to L one. This is going to see divided by four L two plus H. That's the frequency for the modified monopole antenna. So these are some of the examples. E A F E and I F E examples from Nokia mobile phone. I hope you have seen these mobile phones from fifteen years back, two thousand five, two thousand six, or so. So dual band PAFA A two one zero is the specification. This is your short, which is present here. This is your feed, which is present here. And these are being embedded. This is embedded into this place in your mobile phone. That when we put the panel. In the upper, we get the Nokia model. In most of all the Nokia phones, not nowadays, 15 years back.
So any doubts or queries till this? No doubts, sir. Inquiries type in chat box.
Okay, since there are no queries, I proceed on to the next uh, slide, which is defining the antenna terms. In these antenna terms, you should know it in a better way, such that when you become an uh, RF engineer, these terms will be working with in most of the cases. So the most important terms for a mobile terminal antenna design are the impedance bandwidth, radiation efficiency, total efficiency, directivity, gain, mean effective gain, polarization, and the specific absorption rate. So let us define the impedance bandwidth. The impedance level after the mobile terminal antenna is typically 50 ohms for Indian standards. In the input impedance of the mobile terminal antenna differs from 50 ohms at some frequency, then part of the power is reflected back. So the impedance bandwidth should be always kept at 50 ohms. The input impedance which varies rapidly of an antenna typically can be 50 ohms only at some single frequency called resonant frequency of the antenna. So at resonant frequency, the input impedance of the antenna will be 50 ohms. So the impedance bandwidth is the frequency range in which the reflected power stays below some value. Reflected power should not be present or it should be below a certain threshold. So that we call as the impedance bandwidth. So example, the most used reflection coefficient criteria, S11, is minus 6 decibels, which is 25 percentage of the power reflected, minus 6 dB. So this is your 6 dB impedance bandwidth. Let's see. The 6 decibel impedance bandwidth lies around 1.7 gigahertz to 1.9 gigahertz. So that is your bandwidth. 6 dB bandwidth is obtained at this place. This is your 6 dB impedance bandwidth. So here is a chart that states the antenna network. What is the uplink frequency? What is the downlink frequency? Its resonant frequency and its bandwidth. So if you take the GSM 450, the uplink is 450.4, downlink is 457.6, the bandwidth is 7.2 megahertz. Then the downlink is 460.4, lower range and the higher range is 467.6, the cutoff is 464. And the bandwidth is 7.2 megahertz. So here in this, uh, we'll get the reflective bandwidth of around 3.7 percentage. Similarly, for the GSM 850 standard, the edge GSM 900 standard, portable GSM 900, PDC. 940 and 1477 GSM personal communication network is 1800 frequency X personal communication system which is 1900 frequency then the IMT international mobile telecommunication union 2000 the UMTS Universal mobile telecommunication system using frequency division duplexing. Then the same with the time division duplexing TDD. Then the Bluetooth uh, bandwidth, then the GPS bandwidth. You can have an overview of the impedance bandwidth for all the standards.
So any queries so far, you can type in chat box.
So since there are no queries now, I put it on the next step. It's fine. Which is radiation efficiency. So the radiation efficiency is defined as the ratio of the total radiated power to the total input power. In most free space propagation, most of the losses comes from the metal parts of the antenna structure, which are finite conducting materials and from other lossy materials inside the mobile terminals. So this radiation efficiency will give us how much amount of power is radiated from the antenna. So this is used in use positions, operator headers or hands or other part, body parts that can cause less significant losses. So next is the total efficiency. The total efficiency is defined as the same as radiation efficiency but matching losses are taken into account. So expressing all the possible losses caused by the antenna structure is called as total efficiency. So the measured total efficiency is in free space, typically from 35 percentage to 75 percentage. It is about 1.3 to 4.6 decibel loss. So beside the head, it is 10 to 40 percentage is 4 to 10 decibel loss and beside the head and the hand is 5 to 25 percent which is 6 to 13 decibel loss. So here is a graph showing the phone efficiency with respect to the transmission channel. For 900 megahertz transmission band and for 1800 megahertz transmission band. Free space and beside end and beside head and hand. Next is the directivity, this one by D. So, this is the maximum radiated power density from an antenna to the total radiated power average over all directions. So, the radiated uh, power. which is of maximum from the antenna divided by the total radiated power average over all the directions is called as a directivity. So the directivity of a mobile terminal at uh, 900 megahertz would be typically around 2.2 decibels. So the gain will be the total matching losses taken into account so the directivity and the realized gain are different in different directions and can vary from dozens of decibels depending upon the direction. So we should be using the phrase formula very carefully. Next is the mean effective gain. So the gain of an antenna varies significantly depending upon the direction. The orientation of the mobile terminal is quite random, whereas the multipath components that arrive from the different angles are taken into consideration. So the gain of the antenna varies as the number of, does not give any information about the terminal availability. So the mean effective gain is taken into effect is the effect of multipath uh, environment and the orientation of the mobile terminal. So it is given as the power received by the antenna divided by power received by an isotropic generator in the same direction. Next is a polarization. The polarization of a mobile phone varies from a circular to a horizontal and vertical polarizations depends upon the angle. The orientation of the mobile 
tel terminal is typically quite random so the polarization cannot be much be affected by the antenna design you can see a polarization with respect to decibels Next is the specific absorption rate for every domain terminals. So, which we call as SCR. This is the amount of radiated power absorbed by a unit mass of 22. Measuring rate for terminals. So, in European Union, the maximum absorption rate is specified. In terms of the average, the rate in 10 gram cubic of tissue. Some the current knowledge the temperature. So here is international standards, European and the United States. Average the restrictions for an specific observation rate will lead the gram. The whole body of an European should have 0 0.0 feet milliwatts per gram and service field should have 1.0 okay United States having average time for average time of 30 minutes the whole body should have an asymptotic output of not more than 0 0.3, okay, body 1.6, this is 4.0. You can even check uh, the specific absorption rate of your mobile phone that you can see. You will be seeing at the Yes, the country has given SCAR values for radiation. So, the effect of the chases on the mobile phone radiation properties is that during the last four to five years, the chases have been investigated in several different properties. So the percentage of the power is created by the lipotype and the distribution of the power from the chases. The under element works as a coupling element and match this after. When the momentum is changed in the end. So the power input by the under element is large. Is about fifty percent. Let's see. It's a million nine hundred megahertz. The relative bandwidth of the moment of that is on a different basis. The maximum bandwidth of the yeah, when the chases is at less than frequency. You can see the graph. The axis on the ground plane length measured in millimeter. The bandwidth of
Next is the coupling elements. So the coupling elements uh, are used as a prototypes for the enhanced GSM 900 megahertz and the GSM 1800 megahertz systems. So which has a damage of 40. The antenna field is, is about uh, 3.4. The antenna volume is 1.3 cubic meter with a short feed in it. So the short feed when you expand and see it is about uh, 3.0 thickness, the short circuit inside and this is the antenna field. Very for 100 centimeter, everything is setting. So this shows the 82.2 percentage of efficiency is being achieved with this design specific absorption rate. So the modular coupling structure for a radio device comprises of at least uh, an essential non-resident electromagnetic coupling unit which is used for coupling the signals to the wave modes of the ground plane and of the device and at least one matching circuit which is used for impedance matching. So the coupling element located on the surface or closer to the surface, the ground plane will have a conformal plate, a probe or a several probes in parallel, one loop or several loops in series or an aperture or a several apertures. And optionally, the coupling element is implemented with direct galvanic contact to provide electrically separated parts of the chassis. So this is about the coupling elements. The conclusion is that the mobile terminals are getting smaller and smaller. Size reduction is needed also for mobile terminal antennas, which covers most of the area. So internal PAFA type antennas are becoming more and more popular nowadays. So there are many different kinds of terms describing performance of mobile terminal antennas. So the communication engineer should make sure to use the terms correctly with realistic values. So the chassis is the main and essential radiator of a modern mobile terminal that is being used. So the coupling elements can be used to more efficiently couple to the chassis wave mode and thus to minimize the antenna. Volume. So, any queries? These are the references. Any queries you can type in chat box. So the first assessment test for uh, mobile communication networks, the syllabus is uh, unit one and two, MCQ objective type, maximum of 50 questions will be given. So next week when you have a class, you'll be having first internal test for mobile communication. Syllabus is unit one and two, MCQ objective type. The attendance sheet for today's session is given in chat box. It will be active till uh, 12 noon. The students, those who fill this form only will be given attendance.